I'm Super Ron, welcome back to the channel and we're here again at Auto Shack. You saw this glorious 1968 Ford Mustang GT in a previous episode where we just had to give it its check over but unfortunately we found a pretty serious problem. So in this episode we're going to be tearing down the engine and having a look into that. owners and previous companies have put on the car that have just really been bodged together. I had to redo the whole electrical system. The other big job I had to do was under the bonnet. So let's have a look there. The other thing this car suffered from was oil leaks. It used to spill oil everywhere. It's had a lot of modifications done to the engine. It's got Edelbrock's high performance RPM heads. It's got Edelbrock intake and a huge holly carb plus all the aftermarket air filters and rocker covers and everything else. So this is not your usual Mustang Boat Anchor V8. I traced the main oil leak to the back valley cover, which is also the intake manifold. It just hadn't been sealed properly. And then when I started taking it apart, all the bolts that were put in are all different lengths for a reason, but they just mixed them all up. So some of the threads were pulled out, some of the bolts were bottomed out. So everything needed tap and dine. And of course it's all Imperial. So that was a lot of fun. And I'm pleased to see we've got no oil leaks, it's dry as a bone under there, so that has worked perfectly. Unfortunately, a problem it's developed now is a lot of smoking on this side. Out of one side exhaust is a lot of oily smoke, so we've got to look into that. There's not a lot of things that can go wrong, they're pretty mechanical engine. So the first thing you always do is do a compression test. So I did a compression test on the whole engine, went all the way around, and they weren't not too bad. We had 145 PSI, 150, 155, 145, 160, 160, 155, and got to the last cylinder, and we had 20 PSI. So we found that there was a problem on this rear cylinder here. So I'll whip the rocker cover off, check all the valve gear, because a pretty poor design is, you have to take all the valve gear off to take the inlet off. So when I take the inlet off a couple of years ago, I had to strip all this down. So I just wanted to make sure everything was still tight, everything was still adjusted up fine, and all the clearances were all fine until we got to this rear cylinder and we've got a problem here all these ones are nice tight nothing's come unloose we're still all done up nice and tight but we've got some movement here which shouldn't be there so we can see it's not broken a push rod all the valve looks intact here so our suspicions is the hydraulic follow has collapsed down at the bottom but again to take to get down to the follow we have to take all this center off all this valve gear out, so that's what I'm going to do today and see if we can find the source of this problem. And we are deep inside the belly of the beast. So I've got everything off, all the inlet, all the valve gear, all the push rods. The valves are ginormous. I'd say it's got a lot of performance stuff inside. It's got this huge holly four barrel carb. It's got all these competition cams, roller rockers. All look all okay. Got all the push rods. And these are high performance. See that comp cams, really meaty ones. Uh, it's this one here, it's got the problem cylinder. Everything on the end looks fine. They're not bent, all the cups are all all right. All the Edelbrock Performer RPM inlet looks just as clean as when I fitted it a few years ago. So the problem on this inlet valve here. Here are the lifters. There's just one single cam down the middle, chain driven off the crank, 
and then the push rods bring it up and down to the valves. So these ones are all stiff and my prediction is this one, yeah. So the hydraulic lifter has failed and it's just lost its springiness. It should just come out. I've got the rest out, but I still can't get that one problem hydraulic lifter out. But what I've just noticed is on all of these ones, this is what it should look like. You've got this smooth edge that touches the cam and you've got the bit that touches the push rod in there and then the hydraulic pressure in between takes out the free play. So on the bottom of these, it's a nice machine smooth surface. If you look down, if we can see there, you can see the bottom of the spring sticking out of the bottom of the follower. So it's like the bottom of the lifter has come off and it's been the spring rubbing on the cam. So the worrying thing about that is where's the bottom of the lifter? That must be, I don't think it's got caught up in the cam, but because this has had a steering rack conversion and wishbone and coilover conversion, you can't take the sump off without taking the engine out. So I think we're at the stage where this engine has got to come out and the sump has got to come off. Deeper, it's a cylinder head off. I don't know if you can see, but down number eight, it's really tarry, so that is where the oil was coming down. But all in the cylinders look all right. Head gasket all looks perfect. It's still got all the writing on from when it went in. I had to make a little custom tool. The socket had to have a bit of a trim. It's on the cylinder head. I reckon these are supposed to have Allen keys, but to get in there, I had to trim the socket down to be able to get in. Head doesn't look too bad. I can't see anything obvious. Let's find if we can see where this compression is going. You can definitely tell there's something going on in that cylinder eight. How dirty all them ones, then how oily and clean this one is. And the exhaust was really tarry as well. So it's definitely something in this cylinder. The head gasket all looks fine all the way around. I've got to see why this was low compression. So the easiest way is to put a spark plug in, put some brake cleaner in and see if it seeps through. So I've got a couple of the plugs, do that now. Well, that pass doesn't appear to be anything wrong. Our theory was that when the follower collapsed, it might have jammed up, pushed the push rod up and nicked the valve. And that's where our compression was going. But these were holding it just fine. We'll deal with a lot of V8s here, mainly of the Audi variety. And it's just amazing how compact these are compared to these massive great things. The valves are colossal. Here's just a standard spark plug. And the valve springs, they're like coil springs of suspension. They are massive. So it seems like this cylinder head is A-OK. -okay. Whatever the oil is getting in and the compression is going out must be, unfortunately, the bottom end. Another thought I just had, it might be coming out of the valve stem seals is where the oil's coming in. But I've just filled up each side as well and nothing's coming out of the seals. So I think the cylinder heads are all OK. So we've got to find the cause in the bottom end. So I've just got the other cylinder head off. That all looks absolutely fine as well. Nothing wrong in there. So I think we will send the cylinder heads away to the machine shop just to have a pressure test and just a skim if they need it. But it seems like the top end is A-OK. -okay. So the low compression must be from the bottom end. 
So the next step is gonna be getting this engine out and stripping that down. A little update, we're nearly ready to come out. I thought this was gonna be nice and easy just to pop it out, but all the modifications that's been done to this car are proving quite troublesome. The exhaust manifolds have been modified on the car. So it's got that new bit in there, but it's modified on the car. So you can't actually get them out now. And the same with the sump and the cross member, because they've been kind of made on the car and the cross member is not unboltable you can't get it out. So I'm gonna to have to take the engine and gearbox out together because you can't slide the engine off the gearbox, which is a big pain. So I've took the prop and everything off, dropped the exhaust, and we're gonna to have to try and get the gearbox and engine out as one. So I've been rolling around on the floor. The other problem we got, our engine crane. It's a bit on the short side. So this is as far as we can go forwards and we're at a bit of a stretch. So hopefully I can unbolt it, slide it forwards on the jack, and then maybe lift it out. Let's give it a go. Well, I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place here. We've got this huge deep sump but it can't go high enough to get over this welded in subframe. Still that much higher, but we're slammed up against bulkhead. I've tried dipping this end right down, right up. I don't know how it's got to come out. And finally, we are out. Had to actually drop the gearbox off the end of it and leave that in the hole to get the engine out. And that's all down to this welded in modified cross member. You've got these huge engine mounts sticking up. And it's got a really deep cross member on there. And hugging around that is this massive sump with a cutout in the middle. So you can't slide the engine forwards or backwards because it's tight fit all the way around it. It's got the front sump and the rear sump. So there's no forwards or backwards. So I had to actually drop the gearbox off because you couldn't raise the engine up because the gearbox hit the tunnel and you couldn't bring the engine forward off the gearbox because it hit the cross member. So all I needed to do was make that cross member bolt on so we could just drop it down but I guess that's the difference between them and us. I've had a little look in number eight and can't see anything wrong. Doesn't look any worse than any of the other ones. All looks okay. 
So we've still got this broken follower in there. What we're gonna to attempt to do is take out the cam and see if that will drop down. And then we'll take off the sump and collect all the bits out the bottom. And with the engine out, that is most definitely gonna wrap this episode up. I've been here all day getting this engine out. Big regret not getting it in on the ramp, but I thought it'd just be a nice, easy engine out. The heads were already off, so it's just the block, lift it out, and off we go. How wrong was I? And it just made it 10 times worse, laying on my back, trying to get everything undone underneath. But it just goes to show the difference between us and other people of the forward planning. I would have made that a bolting cross member so we could drop it out, and then it would have been able to slide the engine off or bring the whole lot out in one. But as it is, that is impossible. So to put it back in, we're gonna have to drop the engine in and then put the gearbox on afterwards up in the car, which will definitely be a job for the ramp. So overall, pretty good news. We haven't found any catastrophic failures. The only thing we've found is that lifter has collapsed, which is a bit strange from all the symptoms around with the low compression, all the oil. But what our little theory is, is it's the inlet that was closed. So when the piston was on the induction stroke and it was sucking down, no air could go in the inlet valve so it wouldn't have had anything to compress on the compression stroke. So it's just pulling the vacuum down and then pushing out, nothing. And because the head is all okay and all the valve stem seals are okay, what we think has happened is because there was such a vacuum in the chamber that was pulling oil up through the rings and then out the exhaust. Because we can't find any signs of ring failure, any signs of valve stem seals. So as the piston was coming down, the inlet valve was stuck, it was creating a huge vacuum, the oil was coming up through the rings and then pumping it out the exhaust. We're gonna strip it down some more just to make sure. We've got to take the cam out anyway because we need to check whether that broken follower hasn't made any damage on the camshaft itself. But apart from that, everything else looks in really good condition. And then we can take the sump off and finally reseal that up because on the whole car, that is the only bit that was leaking a little bit of oil was that sump. But of course, we couldn't take it off because of that cross member. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you've had more fun watching it than I have doing it. But at least we know for the next one how to take them out. I'll update you in a future episode what happens with the engine and what we found. So make sure you subscribe. We've got lots more cars to do. As you can see, there's even a couple here that we're going to be starting on soon. Give this video a like to make my hard work worth it. But until next time, make sure you have fun.